Hello everyone. Today I'm going to sing a song composed sometime in the 14th century by Amir Khusro. The song is dedicated to his spiritual master Nizamuddin Aulia. My commentators are my friends Tarini and Paul from Delhi and Normandy. Chap tilak sab chhi nirmo se na na milai ke Chap tilak sab chhi nirmo se na na milai ke 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 Baat agam keh di nirmo se na na milai ke Chaap tilak sab chhi nirmo se na na milai ke Prem bhati ka madhava pilai ke Prem bhati ka madhava pilai ke Mat wali kar li nirmo se na na milai ke Chhaap tilak sab chhi nirmo se na na milai ke बल बल जाओ मैं तोरे रंग रे जवा बल बल जाओ मैं तोरे रंग रे जवा 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 अपनी सी रंग दी निरमो से न ना मिलाए के चाप तिलक सब ची निरमो से न ना मिलाए के खुशरो निजाम के बल बल जाइए खुशरो निजाम के बल बल जाइए 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 मोहे सुहागन की निरमो से न ना मिलाए के चाप तिलक सब ची निरमो से न ना मिलाए के थैंक यू प्रॉफ बी फॉर हैविंग अस ऑन योर यूट्यूब चैनल पॉल तारिनी थैंक यू प्रॉफ बी सो वी आर हियर टू डिस्कस आर रिफ्लेक्शंस ऑन चाप तिलक बाय अमीर खुसरो between the two of us we have heard a few renditions uh, including yours now uh, and i guess we'll just kind of start by talking about how we were introduced to the song first introduced to the song you want to go you want me to start perfect so for me i think it was uh, the first time was in uh, 2019 So I heard it uh, through the channel uh, Coke Studio, and the first version I uh, I heard about was uh, Abida Parvin's one. You know about it, uh, Dhani. Abida Parvin, yes, yeah. uh, with uh, Nusrat Fateh Ali Khan. Yeah. Exactly. So this is how I got introduced uh, with these songs, and actually I found it very nice. It was playing on loop uh, on my phone on uh, Spotify, and I listened to it for like. All the first part of uh, my experience when I started to move uh, in India, which was it few was years ago. Yes, yeah, two thousand nineteen. Uh, for me, it was actually my grandmother on my paternal side, uh, who was very engaged with music while growing up. uh with her own siblings and everyone and she introduced me to this song uh one of my favorite renditions of the song is actually by uh Namrata Chaudhary um it's really really beautiful uh very clear in its singing uh 
So yeah, it's it's special in that sense. I think for me, the song or the poetry, the composition kind of uh, speaks of you know one's interaction with uh, a higher kind of being, you know, and uh, one glance of which kind of reduces you to nothingness, like your eye sort of dissolves in your f- perhaps your first interactions and subsequent uh, first interaction and subsequent interactions uh, with the with the al- ultimate truths. I think it's really nice that uh, this is actually a part of a series that you've developed uh, Dr. Barwa with uh, you know your uh, friends and colleagues uh, and it's called the sound of silence because i think for me at a personal level like uh, it is in silence that one kind of encounters the uh, source of uh, all energy and creation um, which i think this composition really beautifully talks about you want to have my opinion uh, yeah, yeah. on it? Yeah. So for me, Chaptilak, I think it's more. It has more to do with also uh, it uh, it echo my uh, passion for music, and also in the context of um, newly moving uh, to a country, I truly think that you discover a country through lots of uh, aspects. One of it is uh, its history. One of its music. It can be also uh, food. It can be people. Um, and I feel like, okay, Chapti, like I heard about it the first time as a song, like literally as a song. Then I did some research uh, about the lyrics, about the history, about the poem, poetry. And I would say that for me, what is interesting is uh, music, songs, poems, uh, literatures, books, or some trace and some testimony of the past. Uh, and they are the only uh, true testimony of the past uh, because if you see when you try to understand a monument when you try to understand uh, uh, past and or old culture it's always based on assumptions it's always based on uh, searching not ve- like trying to verify some hypothesis but when it comes to poems when it comes to songs when it comes to music especially there is no such hypothesis because the lyrics the writings are there uh, they are not changed, they are as they are, you find them as they are. And if we talk about Chaptilak especially, I feel like, okay, to, to be honest, I didn't understand fully like the, the context, the historical context, but uh, it is a song of devotion. It is a song like, that has a very powerful uh, meaning in terms of devotion, in terms of... Uh, uh, not religion, but maybe spirituality. And uh, I feel like the it goes very well with uh, some past history of India. Mm. Or uh, it, it, it starts, for me, it started to give me some insights on the past, on the Mughlai area, especially on uh, uh, what happened the surrounding area and also uh, somehow on the languages how the languages mix between uh, mm-hmm. each other and uh, then after uh, I was also saying that when you start to put the lyrics or when you put the writings and the poem in, uh, in its uh, initial uh, uh, language and you put in front of it uh, Hindi or English uh, you can find lots of similarities uh, so I guess yes so yeah. I don't know if it makes sense yeah no. yeah definitely um, I think it's you know you touched upon religion and spirituality and the difference between the two and I think uh, you know Sufism a disciple of which was Nizamuddin to whom Khusro is referring to in his composition um, is really like I, I find it uh, so I don't know, sp- spiritual in its being, like it's talking about something abstract and not abstract at the same time. Uh, there is an element of devotion that you said, bhakti, that was very prevalent uh, during the during the time. Um, 
that this was composed in uh, i think it's also interesting that in the song like uh, in the composition he's talking about uh, you know how a bride kind of uh, perceives her, perceives her lover or like the you know like the devotion that uh, a, a young girl in love has towards her beloved and you know um it's interesting i think like it's an interesting way to put forth the the connection between um your own being and a higher kind of uh, uh, being so to speak uh but it does kind of to me personally it seems slightly like slightly patriarchal almost because you know it's like okay this is how a this is how a bride or a young girl like devoted to her beloved like must be feeling or, or and you know that then that kind of uh, uh kind of you know it it, it writes how things uh, ought to be or were or can be or you know i mean so it is it is slightly like uh, do you see that a little bit like maybe yeah, yeah, because, i see what you mean i see uh, what you mean it's a little uh, it's beautiful nonetheless like i think like uh, of course beyond seeing uh, the gender bias like it is a beautiful way of putting how uh, a person does regardless of their gender might feel like when they're truly devoted or truly in love or truly like you know uh without a sense of identity like in chap tilak it's like my entire identity me has been you know totally dissolved and there is no there's nothing left of me that isn't yours like you know that isn't the uh the higher beings so yeah it's uh, it's a beautiful song and if i can add also something that what you just said also is it's also a proof that uh, and also the fact that i was saying that i got first introduced to these songs with a very modern version because i think yeah 2019 i think the songs were the, the song itself was only from 2019 mm-hmm. and whatever you're saying is also interesting it's the proof that poem sufism mm-hmm. spirituality or the expression of love and devotion as no like is timeless in the sense yeah. that whatever happened in the past whenever this those words uh, were created by someone uh the same words today uh are bringing you and me in front of uh, yeah. this camera to discuss about it yeah. uh or so the, the versioning of these songs i mean we can talk about it because we even chose this song as part of our uh, a uh, wedding so yeah. we also used another version yeah, so the versioning means that even the 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 people who wants to take it either as a poem either as a song have something in these words in the the lyrics or in the words that resonate inside them or they want other people to experience uh, this text yeah uh in a modern yeah. like in modern days and i think it's it has been the same uh, because you were saying you have been introduced to this song through your uh, grandmother, grandmother so yeah, yeah it is timeless it's, it's living branches. it's living yeah. through the ages and uh, i guess everyone can find uh, a meaning in in it but at the end of the day we all find the same meaning so it's also mm-hmm. very interesting to see that yeah yeah so that's yeah, our two bits is, yes on a beautiful composition thank you for sharing us sharing it with us thank you thanks